Basically, as was said before by the Attorney General, white supremacy was the founding sin of this nation as well. And we have fought a contest since our very founding between soaring aspirations about freedom and liberty and being a haven and a place of safety and the very founding rooted in the sin of racism. We are all here, your elected officials, to stand in solidarity with you and say we will win this fight. We will turn the arc of our history towards justice and we will shape our nation in a direction that moves towards peace and towards justice. This tragedy is also a reminder that words matter. Words have consequence. And we cannot tolerate leaders who wink at racism, who hint at or suggest that there are fine people on both sides, when on one side there are folks who are peaceably protesting, and on the other there are those crawling out from under the rocks we thought we had smashed them with, those who speak of Nazism or of racism or of Islamophobia. Thoughts and prayers are not enough in a moment like this. We must legislate, we must invest in prevention, we must invest in a stronger and safer community, we must make sure there is no future Muslim travel ban, we must speak with one voice in Congress about the love that is the foundation of our country. I will soon introduce a bipartisan bill that will do everything we can to take the next step in making sure our immigration laws are not misused against any one faith. To remind us all that the greatest of the history of America, as Imam spoke, was that we have welcomed with open arms people of every tradition, from every nation. We need to remind ourselves when we come together at an event like this, to reject hatred and embrace the universal values that we share, kindness of diversity and of love. We have to teach our children to see the good in the world. As has been said, children are not born to either love or hate. They learn from us. And so when the world give them, gives them an example of hate, we must speak out and with actions show that love is stronger than hate. Thank you. Thank you, Senator McCone. I request another student from this academy, sixth grade, seventh grade student, Mariam Mujahid, to come and introduce next speaker. Mariam Mujahid, please. Good evening, and as My name is Mariam Mujahid. I'm a seventh grade student that attends Sterling School. Tom Carver for Carter was born in West Virginia and raised in West Virginia. Senator Tom Carper graduated from Ohio State University in 1968. Senator Carper moved to Delaware in 1973 where he earned his MBA at the University of Delaware. Senator Carper has served five terms of a U.S. Congressman as the 78th governor of Delaware in 1992 for two terms. During more than 30 years of public service, Senator Yes, Senator Tom Carver. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Maria. Uh, in Maria's uh, introduction, she did not mention that I spent um, 23 years of my life as a naval flight officer. And uh, during uh, one of uh, three tours in Southeast Asia, Maria, uh, at the end of uh, our deployment, which was for half a year, we flew our planes back to California, and uh, we had a, a month's leave uh, accumulated for uh, time with our families and to travel. And um, one of my best friends and I uh, got off of our plane, and we climbed on another plane, an Air Force plane, uh, and we flew to uh, New Zealand. And it was the first of uh, two times I've been to New Zealand. And uh, I love that country. Uh, the second time we went, uh, my wife was pregnant with our first son, Christopher, who is in New Zealand today at the age of 30. He's been there twice. The first time he doesn't remember. He was in his mother's womb. 
I'll tell you a story of, of New Zealand. Uh, they have two islands in um, New Zealand, North, North Island and South Island. It's a town called Queenstown in the South Island of New Zealand. It is a beautiful country. The people are the kindest people I think I've ever been with. And when I heard the news of this tragedy, I heard the, just a slip it out, just a little bit of it on the news, and I thought that there was a tragedy in America, like so many have been. And you could have knocked me over with a feather when I heard this had happened in New Zealand. And the two weeks, uh, three weeks actually, that we were there, one day we were driving, we rented a car, and we were driving in Queenstown around the Market Square. And we came up behind a produce truck that was stopped to unload fruit and vegetables, take them into a store. Their engines. They got out. They actually offered to help the driver to take his produce into the store. I've never seen anything like it. Can you imagine something like that happening here? Just extraordinary kindness. But in the midst of that extraordinary kindness, uh, evil lurks. Evil lurks. And you've heard my colleagues uh, quote uh, Martin Luther King and, and a number of others, but the, the notion that uh, there's one thing greater than fear, and that's hope. One thing greater than hate, that is love. You, we have here today, not just uh, leaders, governor, the entire congressional delegation of Delaware is here today. We are people of different faith. Our governor is Catholic. Christopher and I are Protestant, as is Lisa. Matt Meyer is Jew. We have people, all kinds of religion. Rabbi leader here from just across the state, from all faiths. We are uh, elected leaders. And as leaders, we have a responsibility to lead by our example. Uh, it's not uh, do what we say, but do as we do. And we have a responsibility as your elected leader to lead our lives in a way that discourages this kind of activity shows no tolerance for this kind of massacre. There's a verse in the, in the Bible in the Old Testament that says, in all things give thanks. This is a hard one to give thanks for. My prayer is that as the people of New Zealand delve into what has happened in their country, which is so out of character for them, as they explore and probe what has happened, and they learn from that, they will share with us what they plan to do to make sure it doesn't happen again. And my hope and prayer is that we may learn from them as well. I want to close with the words of um, the prayer, the prayer of uh, peace is a peace prayer from um, St. Francis of Assisi. You may have heard this one before, but it's uh, St. It Francis, especially appropriate today. It says, Lord, make me a, an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in the giving that we receive, it is the pardoning that we are pardoned, and it's in time that we are born eternal life. When you walked into the United States Senate or the United States House of Representatives and you looked at where the speaker uh, presides, but I do know this, and it says, E pluris, 
Unum. E pluris. Unum. Fa many. One. And in the state of Delaware, we are at one with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Carper. Before I invite Nora Zimmer to introduce last speaker of the day, once again, I individually and on behalf of the Muslim community from this first state, thank all of you for participating in today's program, special or especially our elected officials. And we thank you and thank your party for standing up again, passing the resolution and we request humbly that that matter also address in local general assembly of the state as well to condemning all kind of hatred and passing resolution as well so with that again um, if you have any question please write it down pass it on if we have a time we will address them otherwise our last speaker will speak and then we'll have a 655 prayer led by imam of the masjid and then we'll conclude because our evening prayer is at 7 11. so i will request Again, student from this academy, Nora Zimmer, to come up and introduce our final speaker for this evening. Nora Zimmer, please. Good evening and assalamu alaikum. My name is Nora Zimmer and I'm an eighth grade student at Tabria School. We all know that Governor John Carney was born and raised in the Wilmington Claremont area. We also know that Governor Carney has been working for the people of Delaware for more than 30 years. He has served as Lieutenant Governor and U.S. Representative for Delaware from 2011 to 2017. I want to introduce him as I know him. I first met Governor John Carney when I was in the sixth grade at the Delaware Legislative Hall on April, 27, on April 26, 2017. At the Unity Rally, Governor Carney said, We as a group of Delawareans will send a message across our state that we are one people. I feel blessed to have a governor who recognizes that our humanity is what unites us and that we cannot be divided by our race or religion. He also stated that we are held, that we are here to stand in solidarity with our Muslim American brothers and sisters and neighbors who bring so much to our state. His supportive words bring attention to the fact that we helped shape what America is today. At the end of his speech at the Unity Rally, Governor Carney said, my heart is so full of love and pride to be the governor of the state. I relate to that statement because of the love and pride my heart is full of, to be a resident of this state with such great leadership. His words are reassuring to know that we are not alone and that we will be defended. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our esteemed Governor John Connor. Nora, weekend, I've been struggling with the task of providing some words of comfort at this event. And I've sit, sat through all the speakers from our congressional delegation, our attorney general, our county executive, our lieutenant governor, and the students have introduced us. And I'm the one who's consoled. And I'm the one whose heart is full of love. And I feel so proud, as I did at the last event, to be the governor of this state, where everybody comes together today in solidarity. Christians, Jews, Muslims, Hindus, whatever religion to show support for one another. A congresswoman leaned over to me and she said, what do you say at an event like this? And I said simply, just show them your heart. I think she did in a big way. I think all of the speakers have shown us their heart. And for me, it's great consolation. I'm not sure I can add any additional words to build on that consolation, but I do want to thank 
the representatives from law enforcement for being here and for what you do to provide that layer of protection when all of us are sleeping comfortably in our beds you're always at the watch to make sure that this doesn't happen to you. I did find a, a passage from scripture that provides me with some comfort. And it's from Psalm 46, which says, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Tonight as we sit here, still in shock over the just raw evil that we saw in New Zealand, it certainly feels to me, and it has all weekend, as though the mountains are quaking. The waters are roaring and foaming. The mountains have fallen into the heart of the sea. I've just felt that tumult the whole weekend in my heart. As each speaker has said, we frankly have no choice but to trust in our faith and our shared humanity, as the psalm tells us that God, our God, all of us, is our refuge and our strength, our ever-present help. In my Christian faith tradition, we're told to love our neighbors as ourselves. I know that Islam preaches the same message, as does every religious denomination. What that means for us is that tonight, that when you, our neighbors, are hurting, we feel your pain, we feel your fear, and we feel your sorrow. And we are here for you. You are not alone here in our state. <laughs> Loving your neighbor as yourself also means seeing the humanity and the divine in each and every one. The evil in New Zealand came about from a pervasive effort to separate ourselves from each other, to hate, to focus on our differences and demonize those differences instead of on our shared humanity. Farid Odim Ahmed, whose wife was killed in the attacks, sets an extraordinary example for us. And it's consistent with, our, with what our Congresswoman said. He said, and I quote, I lost my wife, but I don't hate the killer. As a person, I love him. I forgive him. I pray for him. The power of love to overcome hate is in this very expansive view of what love means. Love no matter what. A victim of these attacks in the midst of the deepest personal pain looks into the eye of pure evil and sees his neighbor and loves him no matter what. The only thing that can make any good come out of these horrible attacks is for each of us to be bolstered by stories like this one. The Muslim community at those New Zealand mosques and throughout the world, including here in Delaware, are showing us all what it means to live out their faith, to rise above, and to lead us out of this darkness. Our belief in the ultimate triumph of good over evil it's just about all that we have to hold on to, to lift us up, to provide that consolation that we need. So in the coming days and weeks and months, as we continue to heal from this horrific act of 
terrorism and hate know that the people of Delaware are with you. We are your neighbors and we love you and may God bless you. Thank you very much, Governor Carney. I don't know how much term, how many terms left for you. I'm not part of this uh, state. I'm actually coming from other state. I'm one of the speaker in this mosque where once a month I come and give sermon, so they asked me to come. But with your passion, entire leadership, but with your passion, I'm thinking maybe I should move here. Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> Before the prayer, uh, I would request Brother Abdullah Muhammad to come up on behalf of this community and then I request uh, Imam Talib to conclude this program. Once again, it's been an honor and pleasure to be part of this solidarity gathering. I wish I would have met this leadership under different circumstances, but once I met under these circumstances, I look forward to working with you and keeping up with the American dream that again, from many, we all are one. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum and good evening to all of you. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim I want to thank all of you for coming, especially our elected officials. I get a time to talk with Governor Carney often, meet with him, as well as our other elected officials. It's more that you have come that matters and that you've stayed to listen to what each and every one has shared. I hope that those of you that took the time to listen carefully to what was said, that you hold them accountable to what they say, what they feel, and to learn something from what we've had shared with us today. So that it's not something that just something you hear, but something that you internalize something you feel and you act on. We want to thank the rabbi for giving words that reflect back on his experience and his community's experience. These are things that we need to think about and listen to with a sincere heart, not just our ears, but with our heart. So with that, I don't want to take a lot of time, there's a lot I would like to say, but this is not the time for words. This is the time for action. And it's just regrettable that there are some people in high places that have the power and the influence to really make a difference in this country, and they're not. So we thank those who have come and have shared with us and have fellowship with us and to understand the pain that it really is to learn that there are people still in this world, particularly in this country, that don't care about their fellow man or fellow human being. So again, I want to thank you, and I want to ask you to don't make yourself a stranger. Come. You're always welcome and through our doors. I said only. Now we have Dr. Uh, uh, Shahid, who will give a close up. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Shahid Bajwa. I'm a servant of this masjid. If you want to say English, you can say president. Anyway, I thank you very much for all of our officials over here. It's really touched our heart. Your presence is a great help for us. This is a very painful time. And uh, we really appreciate from bottom of our heart. When we pray here, we include all humankind in our prayers for protection and the blessing. And the praise answers as you believe. And the proof is you all are here. God sent you here to comfort us. You did not come by your own. I pray for you. God bless you for coming over here. Only a few of them, but 
you all are heavier than those. I remember, like, uh, we cannot blame the whole bus for one bad apple. I see many heart touching scenes from New Zealand. I don't have a time, much time, but I will mention one 66 year old lady. When she silenced this incident, she was somewhere over there. She approached the victim. She took him to the hospital. That's make me cry. So we should not blame everyone. And as my brother Abdullah said, this person, when I pray for whole man, mankind, this person was including in my prayers. See? And another thing, last thing I want to tell you, as a Muslim, I've been living here since 79, almost 40 years. I love my bad birthplace, Pakistan. But more than half of life I spent here, I love America. I don't have to tell anyone, believe me. I'm standing in front of Allah, in Allah house. We love, from bottom of our heart, this is our country. And almost every day, God is my witness. I say, and I mentioned to my friends, my relative, my wife, God bless America. God bless. It's not because we have to. The amazing thing I want to tell you, more or less, God forgive me, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu peace be upon him, he migrated from his birthplace to Medina and his resting places in Medina. And he said, love the place where you live. So we have to follow him. If not, if not, we are not a good Muslim. Anyway, sir, thank you very much. And I will request you as a governor and a Matt Meyer, Newcastle County Administrator, he was here on Friday. And I have your picture praying with us from the old mosque. mosque. So at the end, I will invite you, please keep coming. Don't wait. Some incident happened. Keep coming, come in touch with me. So this way you will learn the love of Islam. You will know what is Islam. We need some efforts to learn what is Islam. You went to school, you went to university to learn the education, right? So efforts, you will be asked. No, God has given you iPhone 7 and 8 in your hand, and God will ask you, I give you phone 7 and you don't find what is Islam. You have to answer them. So like Matt Meyer, he was here always, like you do. I ask him, please keep coming. Keep, come, keep coming more often, participate in our Salat. Maybe one day you will hear us in the Salat. <laughs> Inshallah. I once again thank you very much, sir. Please keep coming. I wish other people were there, so I personally thank them. But they have to go other places. And I really appreciate our new family. Thank you very much, sir. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله ومن تبعهم بإحسان الله والدين I know the Almighty says in the Quran الكريم وقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم The Almighty says in the Quran الكريم Oh my servants Pray ask anything your needs from me and I shall you know respond to you and I know that the Almighty says in the Quran and Quran also, وَجَزَاءُ سَيِّئَةٍ سَيِّئَةٌ مِثْلُهَا فَمَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْلَحَ فَأَجِرْهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ He said, if someone did something wrong to you, you have your right to return it back. But if you forgive and be kind and be nice, he will reward you. So here we know that the individual one, the one who killed, you know, our brothers in New Zealand, he doesn't know. He needs our prayer. We should pray for him first. 
May Allah, the Almighty, guide him to the straight path. Because when you look at the biography of the Prophet, peace be upon him, whenever anybody did something wrong to him, he will not curse him, he will not ask Allah against him, he will always pray for him. Allahumma fil li qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamun. He said, Oh Allah, forgive my people because they don't know. So we are here asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the straight path, to forgive all of us, to protect all of us, insha'Allah. Allahumma rabbana ati nufusana taqwaha, wa zakiha anta khayru man zakaha, anta waliyuha mawlaha, yu rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. Allahumma rabbana afil lana, wa li ikhwalina alladhina sabakuna bil iman, wa la taj'al fi qulubina ghilla di alladhina amanu, ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم وصل الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Uh, Inshallah, Salat al-Maghrib will be at 7.